Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the new and completely unexpected, out of left field, took us all by surprise, 172nd scale ME410 from Airfix. Let's have a look. First thing I am happy to report is this kit is molded in the much stiffer, crisper, dark gray plastic that Airfix seems to have become more fond of in over their past few releases. That is definitely a welcome thing over their relatively soft, light blue stuff that you can still find. Plastic is very smooth, no discernible texture per se. Standard panel lines, a little bit of rivet detail on the lower wing here. Panel lines look relatively, look deep enough, not super sharp, but nor are they completely soft. So far, so good. Next sprue, fuselage half, horizontal tail, engine nacelles, propellers. Curiously, Airfix has given us the option of having, I guess, we'll say deflected, but drooped uh, elevators. But instead of separate elevators that you glue on in whatever position you choose, they have molded the elevators complete with the horizontal tail plane. So you simply put on the front piece to make up the full thickness and there's your elevators done. So that's a nice touch, a little bit more dynamic posing. Of course we have a separate rudder as well so that can be posed. Engine nacelles look pretty nice, some nice raised sort of hinge detail where the cowlings would open up. Propellers look pretty good. The, now the um, aircraft that Airfix modeled this off of at the uh, at RAF Hendon, if I'm not mistaken, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that aircraft suffered damage during testing uh, immediately after World War II and the propellers had to be cropped off. Um, so nice to know that Airfix did not blatantly copy what the museum had for once and actually give us a more accurate uh, propeller shape. Um, I do think these should be a little bit more uh, pointed and a little bit more leaf shaped, um, but at least they are not uh, squared off like the plane in the museum is. But looking good, a little bit of cockpit uh, detail molded into the fuselage. Yeah, panel lines seem to be consistent, a little bit of uh, Rib detail, I'm assuming these would have been fabric covered um, elevators. Next sprue, the other fuselage half. Uh, we got some cockpit details, we got our main wheels, looks like a wing, nice big wing spar. Cowlings, got the barbettes for the um, defensive machine guns. Some. Uh, Drop tanks from the wings. It's again, a little bit more detail molded into the side of the fuselage. Lots of ejector pins, but cleverly not anywhere we're gonna see, thankfully. Somebody's paying attention. And Nice that they've actually slightly flattened the main wheels and keyed them to the landing gear legs, so it'll look like there's a little bit of weight on the aircraft. Next sprue, we get our prop hubs. 
Got our exhaust pipes, oil coolers, radiators. I'm gonna say that's our ailerons and uh, wing slats. Shrouds for the exhaust. Not a lot of molded on detail here, but what there is looks okay. Panel lines on the prop pubs may be a little bit soft, but that's uh, just a result of the, the way they've molded them. Can't be helped there. And all kinds of little bits and pieces, various parts for the landing gear, balance horns by the look of it for the controls, main landing gear legs, tail wheel, very, very chunky seats for the uh, pilot and the uh, gunner. Bits for the more bits for the cockpit. Everything seems to be pretty cleanly molded. Uh, just looking on the landing gear legs, doesn't seem to be too much of a mold seam, just very faint. So cleanup should be pretty easy in that regard. It looks like option for retracted tail wheel or extended. Airfix is always quite fond of uh, in-flight options in their kits, but we'll find out with the instructions. And the last gray sprue we have is the lower section of the nose. So this kit caters for the large 3.7 centimeter uh, anti-bomber cannon um, or the uh, 20 millimeter armed variant. Um, I would assume Master or Aber or somebody will probably have a turned metal um, barrel if they don't already uh, for this because that does have a very distinctive muzzle brake with lots of holes in it that would definitely look good in metal but reasonable facsimile in plastic all things considered. I believe there was also a Schnell Bomber version of the ME410, so I'd be curious to see if we'll see that at some point. And, uh, these doors would open up and there'd be a small bomb bay in the nose. Perhaps things to come. And our clear sprue. Center windshield and the center section molded as one very thin piece with the left and right molded separately. Uh, the AE cockpit canopy, the ME110, when viewed from the front, bulges out past the sides of the fuselage. Uh, so there's no real easy way to mold that in a conventional manner. So pretty much anybody who's done an ME210 or 410 kit um, has always molded in this style. So there's you know, only so much, so many ways to uh, reinvent the wheel. Parts are very clear doesn't appear to be any that sort of cobwebbing effect when the plastic kind of doesn't meet up quite right in the molds. Clarity's good. Distortion is minimal even through those very curved side windows so whatever detail you put in the cockpit will be somewhat visible but uh, I still wouldn't go too crazy unless you plan on cutting and uh, posing it open. But uh, yeah, definitely an improvement over some other kits we've seen from Airfix in terms of clear parts. And the decal sheet, what's to be said, it's an Airfix kit, which means cartograph decals, which means there should be no problem. Colors look good, registration looks good. Clear film is kept to a minimum where possible. You do have complete clear through the middle of the outline crosses, so you may want to poke those a few times to make sure you don't get any bubbles or silvering. Obviously, there's a white band around the tail of one of the options. I would mask that and paint that instead of using the decal, but uh, that's me. Yeah, should be good. And the markings for the kit. Option A. 
Sestora Geshvada 26 in Norway, 1945. This would be the one armed with only the 20 millimeter cannons. Uh, if you are not confident doing the mottling that you often see on the sides of German aircraft, this would be the better one to pick for you because you only have it on the tail as opposed to down the sides. Some unique uh, camouflage going on on the tail here. Standard RLM 74, 75, 76, mid late war fighter colors. Hard edge on the wings, that makes it nice and easy. And option B, same, Geschwader 26, earlier, Königsberg in Germany in 1944. And this one's armed with the big F off cannon. 3.7 centimeter modified flak gun, uh, meant as a bomber destroyer, except by this point of the war, these things were lucky if they could get anywhere near a B-17, let alone in range to use this thing. Uh, this option is going to be a little bit more intensive on the paint, uh, very heavily mottled down the side here, so yeah, you, you want to exercise your airbrushing abilities, this would be the option to pick. And I'm sure with a new ME410 kit out, that it won't be very much longer before Extra Deckle and everybody else has deckle sheets catering to other variants. I know the Hungarians had ME210s. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if they had 410s or not, but that would definitely be a colorful option. And finally, the instructions, the usual historical blurb. Airfix would like to thank RAF Museum for, and Lynn Ritker for their assistance in developing the moment. So the RAF Museum uh, Hendon, that was the real aircraft that they scanned for the model. Uh, usual guide, etc., etc. We've all seen that. Like every airplane ever, start with the cockpit assembly, uh, some holes to be drilled for option B, so with the big cannon. Seats go in, control sticks, instrument panel go in, bulkhead, the surround here, a few panels and bits. Um, if you're doing option B, once again, the big cannon, this little part goes in here. And if you are fitting the outer wing drop tanks, you've got holes to open up on the outer wing. Wing spar goes in. Uh, looks like the rear cockpit position goes into the wing. So be the radio operator slash gunner slash whatever else he was asked to do. A portion of the cowling. Uh, oh, okay, so these are part of your landing gear bay doors. So this is for the in-flight option. Uh, I'd say whichever one you're gonna do, go through and highlight all those steps so you don't get confused. Uh, parts of the wheel wells go in. So here's your wheels down. Cockpit, rear bulkhead for the tail wheel. Cockpit parts, entire cockpit assembly is now going into the fuselage. Uh, fuselage halves go together, do not glue. So that is going to be where the little barbette guns mount. So those will be posable. Um, if that's important to you, then don't glue this. Um, otherwise, yeah, glue it in place. Uh, fuselage goes onto the lower wing, upper wings. Uh, you got your options for your leading edge slats, either deployed or retracted. Now, there was uh, no direct control by the pilot of these. These simply were out unless acted on it by aerodynamic forces. Um, you get your horizontal tail. And once again, you get your option of your neutral or your deflected elevators. You got your rudder. Now, they just show it going on straight, but you could always deflect that as well. Cowlings go together, oil coolers, those go into the wing. Uh, option A, so we've got our uh, 20 millimeter guns. 
Now, there's, now these, you may want to replace those with some um, brass tubing or some uh, turned metal examples, or very, very carefully drill out or, or poke a hole in the ends of those plastic ones. Option B, big 3.7 centimeter gun. Um, would have been nice, perhaps, if they had mounted the barrel so that it could be installed at a later, uh, towards the end of the build to avoid that getting broken off. So maybe perhaps if you're paying attention, saw that off, put a pin into it so you can slide that in at the end. Uh, note, when building model with radiator flaps closed, follows steps 31 to 38. When building with radiator flaps open, miss out, uh, British English, skip steps 31 to 38, and carry on from 39. Okay, so yeah, radiator faces go in. Uh, radiator flaps go on. And then, okay. I'm going to assume that the 410 was similar to the 109 where the radiator flaps were also kind of part of the uh, the actual air, uh, aerodynamic flaps. So they act for lift and braking. And this is for the flaps deployed. Yeah, so there's different parts being called out here. So once again, pick which one you want. Uh, ailerons with the balance horns, exhaust pipes, and you may want to paint those and then add them on at the end of the bill, uh, which you can't do because you got the shrouds there. So ixnay on that. get our defensive guns only apply glue to the highlighted area um, honestly functional parts and model kits like this I've never quite seen the point um, pick a pose that you like glue it in place call it done um, I would assume these would just be straight backwards under normal conditions I'm not sure if these would deflect down I'm assuming these were powered and not just directly controlled by the gunner. So I would assume these would just be in a straight backwards position if they are not being used. So do with that how you see fit. Left and right halves of the wheels go together. Landing gear struts, the oleo, oleo scissors. Uh, landing gear legs go in. Now it's nice that you can actually put these in later on in the build so you're not worried about possibly breaking those off earlier on uh, your close your retracted tail wheel extended tail wheel and your fuel tanks pardon me drop tanks now there's lots of panel lines on these so once you get that glued together and those seams taken care of you're going to be a fair amount of uh, cutting those lines back in or, I mean, ever if you've built any Messerschmitt 109, 110, Focke-Wulf 190, you're going to have spares of this. So you never know, maybe be able to filch some better ones out of a different kit. Of course, these are all optional, so maybe consult some references if you like. Props go into the hub. Uh, do not glue, because we can play with our propellers, I guess. Uh, some structural components into the cockpit. Looks like the gun, oh, the nicely gun sight for the, the, the rear cockpit. Some of the, the very forward glazing for the cockpit. Notice different parts if you are have the 20 millimeter or the 3.7 gun, so keep that in mind. Uh, cockpit canopy itself, so you're going to want to take lots of care to get this all nice and lined up. Uh, and make sure you don't get any errant glue spills. We got some radio antennas, 
the boarding step, aerial mast, pitot tube, and Bob's your uncle. You're all done with your 410. So the new ME410 from Airfix definitely uh, caught the entire modeling world by surprise when they dropped this one the night before the uh, Scale Model World show at Telford. Um, managed to keep this one, this bee under their bonnet for quite a while. So uh, this thing was actually in stores when Airfix made the announcement. That was bloody impressive. Or, well, at least stores in the UK, the advantage of having model production in your own country. Um, but yeah, definitely looks like a pretty decent kit. Um, viewers of this channel will know my opinions of uh, Airfix at this point, and they are not always the highest of regards. Um, this one definitely seems like one of their A-teams was involved. Um, details look good. I'm not a 410 expert, but uh, initial examination seems to be it is, looks quite accurate. Nothing glaringly obviously wrong, thankfully for that. Um, they're using that nicer, harder plastic, which is good to see. Um, it's all good if you want to put lots of fine details in the CAD, but it's another thing if the materials you're using cannot render said details and using this harder plastic is going to allow them much crisper detail which is nice to see them actually take a step forward into the 21st century of model kit design and manufacture. If you'd like to see more content like this by all means click like and subscribe. Thank you very much and we'll catch you next time.